Jibreel with the Prophet ﷺ. The angel that was closest to the Prophet ﷺ, the one who supported the Prophet ﷺ, his protective friend from the angels is Jibreel ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, he also says in another narration, he says, مَا بِن نَبِيًّا إِلَّا لَهُ وَزِيرَانِ مِنْ أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ وَزِيرَانِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ There is no prophet except that Allah gives him two ministers from the inhabitants of the earth and two ministers from the inhabitants of the heavens. He says, وَزِيرَايَ مِنْ أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ My two inhabitants from the heavens are Jibreel and Mikal. My two ministers from the inhabitants of the heavens are Jibreel and Mikal. وَوَزِيرَايَ And my two ministers مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ From the inhabitants of the earth are Abu Bakr and Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما. Now how does the first encounter of the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel go? As a young child. Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was running around, playing with all of the children, just like everyone else. When suddenly a man came and he grabbed Rasulullah wasallam and he threw him into the ground. So all of the other children went running to their parents and they said, Inna Muhammadan qad qutil. That Muhammad wasallam has been killed. And as they're running to their parents, the Prophet wasallam is watching now what this man is about to do to him. Rasulullah wasallam said, He cut my chest. He opened my chest. He grabbed the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. And he took something from the heart of the Prophet ﷺ and he said, هَذَا حَظُّ الشَّيْطَانِ منك. This is the portion of evil within you, the portion of the devil within you. And he threw it. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, he proceeded to wash my heart in a golden vessel of zamzam. And the Prophet ﷺ is watching all of this as a child. And his heart was put back ﷺ. And by the time the kids got back, they found the Prophet ﷺ with his chest sewn up. And they said his face was blue. The Prophet ﷺ's heart was taken out physically, and he was purified alayhi salatu wasalam. He got absolutely no explanation from that moment. He was traumatized by the incident. He didn't know what happened. 34 years later, at the age of 40 years old, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, the Prophet ﷺ, he started to see الرؤية الصالحة or الرؤية الصادقة Truthful, righteous dreams. And that continued for six months. Everything that he was seeing in his dream would come true the next night. So he already has an idea that something is happening. Just to sort of understand why the Prophet ﷺ would all of a sudden start going to a cave, right? And meditating and praying. It's also been concluded now in his household between him and Khadija radiallahu anha that it's a supernatural experience, that someone is communicating with them from the divine. Some form of creation is communicating with the Prophet ﷺ. Now this continues for six months. Then suddenly Aisha radiallahu anha says, Allah bestowed the love of seclusion on the Prophet ﷺ. Suddenly he loved to be alone. Rasulullah would climb up to Hira. Now Hira is about a two hour climb. But if you get up to Hira, you have this aerial view of Mecca. SubhanAllah, you see everything. The Prophet would go up there for days, weeks, and then finally the entire month of Ramadan, وَيَتَحَنَّثْ One narration says يَتَحَنَّثْ which is Ad-Din Al-Hanifi, the, the monotheistic religion of Ibrahim ﷺ. He worshipped Allah in accordance with the monotheistic religion of Ibrahim ﷺ. Which means he just went up there and he prayed in any way that he could. He didn't have an organized salah. He called upon God in an Abrahamic way. That's literally what the narration is saying. Suddenly as the Prophet ﷺ is there one day, he sees Jibreel salam. Now, did Jibreel come to him in the form of an angel? Or in the form of a human being? In the form of a human being. So you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world was the Prophet ﷺ scared then? Well think about it, you're two hours up there, no one's around you, and then all of a sudden you see a strange man standing at the mouth of the cave, and he's just staring you down, he's not saying anything. What might you think is happening if you're the Prophet ﷺ? To add on to that, a future narration gives us an idea of what happened to the Prophet ﷺ. Rasulullah ﷺ, when he told Khadija what happens, he said, جَاءَنِي الَّذِي أَتَانِي فِي المنام. The one who I was seeing in my dreams came to me. So that further establishes that the Prophet ﷺ had already seen Jibreel in his dreams. And so he's thinking that this is strange, I'm not sleeping right now, I'm not dreaming, which explains why Jibreel grabbed him. He hugged him. This is real. Iqra, read. Right? Read. You are not hallucinating. This is not a vision. I'm really here. Not only am I really here and I'm squeezing you to show you that, 
inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila the words that are going to be revealed to you this revelation that's going to come to you it's going to be heavy right you need to be ready to acquire this iqra so he commanded him read and he let him go and the prophet sallallahu said i don't know how to read so jibril alayhi salam grabbed him again harder and said read iqra and he said i don't know how to read and Jibreel alayhi salam grabbed me the third time. He said, Sallallahu alayhi he grabbed me the third time and he held me so tight that I thought I was going to die. And said, Iqra, read. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, What shall I read? And that's when Jibreel alayhi salam said, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who creates. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Who created man from a suspended clot. Iqra wa rabbuka al akram. Read and your Lord is most generous. The one who taught man that which he knew not, taught man the use of the pen. The Prophet ﷺ, as he receives these words, and that happens, Jibreel didn't grab him again. And Jibreel didn't go anywhere. The Prophet ﷺ left the cave and he went running down. And Khadija radiallahu anha said, what happened? Now when the Prophet ﷺ told her what happened, Khadija radiallahu anha, she could have easily been like, well maybe you should stop going up to that cave. Maybe you should stay home more often. Let's just pretend this never happened. You know, you can meditate in the corner of the house and we'll leave you alone. And inshallah, nothing will happen again. She didn't say that. Look at how beautiful Khadija, subhanAllah. She truly believed in the Prophet ﷺ before he believed in himself. Truly. She tells the Prophet ﷺ, Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abada. Allah would never disgrace you. And she starts to give us the last 15 years of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. إِنَّكَ لَتَصِرْ رَحِمْ You're a man who establishes the ties of kinship. You're a man who takes care of the orphans and the poor. You're a man who's generous to his guests and to his neighbors. There is no one who has a cause except that you take up their cause. Allah would never disgrace you. Khadija says, let's go to Waraqah. So they go to him. And the Prophet ﷺ tells Waraqah what he saw. Waraqah right away says, هَذَا النَّمُوسِ you're the messenger that everyone's been waiting for. That's Jibreel that came to Musa alayhi salam. And he said, I wish I was young enough that I could have lived to see and support you when your people turn you out. Now what happens after that? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that, there was a fatrah, there's a pause in revelation. That pause in revelation was a very long time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waits. He waits for this angel to come back. The Prophet ﷺ starts to walk back into those mountains. And Rasulullah ﷺ expresses in his own words that it was like he wanted to throw himself off because he wanted some sort of clarity. What's going on? Every time the Prophet ﷺ would get into those mountains, he would hear the voice of Jibreel ﷺ saying, Ya Muhammad, innaka Rasulullahi haqqan. O Muhammad, you are the Messenger of Allah in truth. And that calmed the Prophet ﷺ down. And the Prophet ﷺ would go back to his house. Then, later on, not only did he say, Ya Muhammad, innaka Rasulullah haqqan, he said, Wa ana Jibreel, and I am Jibreel. So he clarifies to the Prophet ﷺ that he's Jibreel. But still, no Qur'an, no revelation. Finally then, the Prophet ﷺ was walking once again. And this time, it was not, Ya Muhammad, innaka Rasulullah haqqan. O Muhammad, you're a messenger of Allah in truth. This is the hadith of Jabir in Al-Bukhari, that the Prophet ﷺ was walking, and suddenly the Prophet ﷺ looked up and he saw Jibreel ﷺ in his full angelic form covering the space between the heavens and the earth. Covering the entire horizon. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? ذُو مِرَّةٍ فَاسْتَوَى He rose alayhi salatu wasalam. Jibreel ﷺ rose to the sky and he covered the entire horizon. The Prophet ﷺ saw him with all of his wings, with his full creation. ثُمَّ دَنَا فَتَدَلَّى He started to come close to the Prophet ﷺ. He was less than two bow lengths away from the Prophet ﷺ. Right? He came close to the Prophet ﷺ. And Rasulullah ﷺ fell to the ground. He said that I was so scared that I fell to the ground that he came that close to me. And the Prophet ﷺ went back to his home and he told Khadija radiallahu anha, زَمِّرُونِي دَثِّرُونِي Cover me. Embrace me. And that's when the next revelation came. Ya ayyuha al-muddathir, qum fa'anthir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, wa thiyabaka fa'tahhir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, you who is covered up. SubhanAllah, think about it. The first revelation, the Prophet ﷺ was in the cave. The second time, the revelation came to him while he was in the arms of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Wrapped up. O oh, you who is wrapped up, stand up and warn. Stand up and call the people. 
and declare the greatness of your Lord. Purify your garments, abandon the idols. Right? This is the first revelation. And subhanAllah, from that moment, Aisha radiallahu anha says, the revelation heated up. Meaning what? After that long pause, after Surah Al-Muddathir, came Surah Al-Muzzammir, came Surah Al-Duha, so on and so forth. There are multiple surahs that started to come very quickly to the Prophet wasallam, And that's where it starts. The Prophet wasallam now understands what is happening. The Prophet wasallam understands he's a messenger of Allah. The Prophet wasallam is no longer terrified by the presence of Jibreel It's been made clear to him, alayhi salatu wasalam.